I wanted to share a step-by-step -step DMEC video on essentially how I do DMEC surgery now. So this is DMEC alone and not a DMEC combined with a cataract. We start here with graft preparation. I lightly stained the uh, endothelium with tripan blue and then quickly followed by removing as much of the tripan with a Wexel. We do this so that I can actually see the edges of where the graft was stripped. It'll help me in planning my trephination. So once that segment is done, I align the center of the graft with the four marking holes there. Once I've got a good alignment, I use a 7.5 Baron Hesburg non-vacuum tree find to punch through. Once I've punched through, I've added some of the Optisol back into the solution and come up. The first thing I do is I remove the peripheral rim. You want to be careful that the graft isn't attached to the peripheral rim in case you didn't trephinate all the way through. And then what I'm doing is, is I'm tamping down the peripheral edge uh, or the peripheral rim so that I'm able to actually get underneath the graft. Now what I like to do is open the uh, curved tires here and get underneath the graft to make sure that it is truly separated completely. I've heard many stories where the graft is actually torn because there was an edge that wasn't completed and I like to actually tear in a, in a circumferential manner rather than lifting all the way off. I have had a tear where I've lifted it all the way off once and since then I've kind of adopted this maneuver. Once I've freed up the graft and laid it back down within the solution, uh, it's time to draw up as much of the solution as possible. You want to be careful here not to touch the graft uh, with your Wexel. Here you can see the nice S marking that was made previously that's going to greatly help us in our orientation inside the eye. We then cover the uh, graft in tripan blue and set it aside. We then go to our patient here. Here I'm using an 8mm ring marker. And we mark this because this is the site that we're going to have our um, desmetorexis. <coughs> I currently use a three millimeter wound and that's what that caliper set at and the other two marks there are for my uh, side port. So I start here by making a side port incision and I'm using a 0.6 or a 23 gauge blade here. Now I like to make sure that the internal lip is nice and open so that allows me to maneuver my BSS or air cannula within the wound. You want to make sure not to use any kind of dispersive OVD, only cohesive. Here I'm basically just using ProVisc, not Viscoat. I then move on to my incision. kind of making a sheveled, a shelved incision here. We're going to end up suturing this anyways. And I also extend the wound there, making sure it's also nice and open. Gives me more maneuverability. So here I'm using a reverse Sinsky hook and I'm just going to score the decimation endothelium and then you can essentially grab one of the edges and it should peel. If this is a typical Fuchs patient decimase membrane endothelium will peel off in a nice sheet. Now it's important not to leave any tags uh, because these tags can actually promote detachment of the graft. Now one instrument that I really liked is the Strico uh, forceps 
which have <clears throat> a twin ring design that really kind of allow you to grasp tissue uh, in an upward fashion here. I also like to go back in and make sure I grab any uh, leftover remnants. <clears throat> and here I've identified a small remnant right uh, inside the stripped area. So I'm basically going back in and, and grabbing it. Again, this is really crucial to help with graft attachment. Next, I basically perform my peripheral iridotomy inferiorly. And I uh, do this by injecting some viscoelastic uh, provisc to kind of elevate the iris. And then I use a little bit of local myocol. As you can as you can see, I really injected it just inferiorly where I want it to. You don't want to inject it all over because you've still got viscoelastic that you need to get out of the eye. <coughs> but I feel like the step is safer here uh, with some viscoelastic still within the eye. So I've taken a 30 gauge uh, needle, uh, half inch, and I've basically bent it. This this maneuver is quite awkward and part of it is blind and you want to be really careful here because you can cause an iris hemorrhage uh, so you want to try to pick the area that's uh, basically got the least amount of iris stroma and you use the Sinsky hook to kind of scratch down over your bent 90 uh, bent 30 gauge needle until your needle is fully visible. Next I actually like to suture my main wound but not tie it and I do this now because I've had one instance of air traveling behind the pupil and I've also had uh, a uh, heme traveling into the eye at the time that I placed my suture and I find that this step saves me a lot of grief. So. Now I'm going in with my INA and essentially removing as much of the viscoelastic as possible and then I'm actually using uh, the INA to essentially uh, remove or kind of <coughs> suction along the uh, stroma here. Once that step's done we're going to go back to our graft basically draw up as much of the tripan blue as possible. <coughs> Put a little bit of optisol in to kind of float our graft and we have a nice tight scroll here. I'm using the new Strico modified Jones tube that um, last I went to the talk is meant to actually fit through a 2.4 millimeter incision. I like to use a bevel up technique and I aim away from the pupil slightly and that is because I've sent a graft partially through the pupil once. Now I like to once I've slowly injected the graft in you want to decompress the anterior chamber as much as possible and I like to use my BSS cannula there just before I come out to help prevent any kind of graft extrusion. Now then I basically tie my suture and uh, we start our process of trying to get the graft oriented. I find that orienting the graft in a vertical fashion before you get it to unfold uh, has worked the best for me. So here all I'm basically doing is slowly getting the graft uh, into position and shelling the chamber as much as possible. Now in this patient the not only is the chamber shallowing, it's actually collapsing and that actually will end up working against you when you're trying to position the graft. And in these cases, uh, you have to, at least in, in my experience, essentially put some pressure on the side of the eye to help form a chamber. So I'm using my left index finger to help form the chamber and I'm continuously trying to shallow the chamber. Now this is one of my favorite maneuvers which is kinda like a negative pressure technique. You you push down away from the graft uh, and then you release pressure quickly and that uh, opening up of the fluid current kinda of pulls the graft in the direction that you want to go. And then this other one is you can actually just push the graft as well. So now once you, this is kind of getting into where close to the ideal position but as you notice as I'm trying to unfold the graft the whole graft is actually moving down which at this stage essentially uh, means I'm going to need to pin the graft 
and and help unfold it. Now this ends up being kind of an awkward technique because um, you have to maintain pressure to help keep your shallow chamber without it collapsing and you have to figure out a way to pin the graft and then use another um, use your other hand to help unfold it. So here I'm basically using my middle finger to exert pressure on the eye, positioning the cannula between my middle finger and my index finger to help pin the graft and now I'm using that negative pressure technique intermittently shallowing the chamber to get the graft to unfold. Now we have a young, it's a 55 year old graft, so this, ten, this graft tends to scroll uh, more than an older graft. It's very important to try to get all those edges unfolded. They'll often end up just causing you more of a headache down the road. So keep shallowing the chamber and unfolding each of the edges until all of it's done. and here I'm pretty happy. Now to move the graft you can actually tap it at this stage in the direction that you want to move it and it should move. You can also employ some negative uh, pressure movements kinda like what I did before to also help it move. Now once you've got this, uh, once again I'm still, you know, I still don't want the graft to shallow because it may end up folding along the edges so I'm still exerting pressure with my middle finger and I'm getting the air cannula. You want to watch this step very carefully. Make sure you're sliding above the iris, underneath the graft, and slowly inject an air bubble. Once you've got your air bubble, you essentially want to go back in and do a full air fill. I do a full air fill at this stage for about 10 minutes. Once the full air fill is completed, uh, we end up evacuating some of the air to leave about a 9, maybe 10 millimeter bubble at the end of the case, aiming for about a mid-20s uh, IOP. Well, thanks for watching.